Hello everyone. My name is Vipul Jain, and today I am going to show you that how you can create document set dynamically in a SharePoint document library using Power Apps and Power Automate. So I will tell you the reason behind creating this video. So generally there is a requirement that there will be some uh, attachment control or user will be uploading the documents in your client requirements or in your project in which you are working. So generally what we do that we can also have the list attachments as a SharePoint list attachments at the back end. And there could be a very good debate or reasoning behind going as SharePoint list attachments or creating a document set or using a SharePoint document library. But that's all a different topic altogether. That's not related to this topic. Why I have chosen this topic that in my scenario, what happened is that client wants to also add some metadata or maybe you can say tag the documents with some metadata, individual documents which will be uploaded as a part of the request. So basically there will be a form, a request form, which user will fill and they will attach, they can attach multiple documents while creating a new request or submitting a new request. And at that moment, they also want to tag the documents with some particular metadata. So that's why I use the architecture or the design wherein uh, the documents will be uploaded in a document set in the document library and the metadata, the request metadata or the form metadata which is created in Power Apps will be saved in a separate SharePoint list. So in this video, I'm going to show you that from Power Apps, how you can create the document set dynamically using Power Apps and Power Automate. So basically in this video, I will be using a Power Apps screen just for uh, entering the data, the document set name, which we can take as an input from the user. And primarily the document set will be created using Power Automate, which will be running at the backend. So let's see this in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Power Automate where I will be using the action send an HTTP request to SharePoint. Generally, I just want to clear one confusion if you have that send an HTTP request to SharePoint is not a premium connector or a premium action which you can use. It's a standard action which can be used in Power Automate. So no need of extra license or subscription in case of premium connectors to be used for this particular purpose, which is creating the document set dynamically in a SharePoint document library. So let's see this in action. Let me navigate to the SharePoint environment first of all. So this is my SharePoint online site. I have created a document library, which is PP demo document set. The name of the document library is PP demo document set. I will navigate you to the document library settings also for creating the document set. You have to enable the content types by going to the advanced settings of the library. You enable the content types and you add the document set content type. That is the first and foremost requirement to create a document set in a SharePoint document library. And after that, we will start working in Power Apps and then we will see this in action that how a document set can be created dynamically in Power Automate. So very simple. I will keep the things very simple for you to understand. And for that purpose, I'm going to just add a text input, a input control, which is kind of a text box. You can consider this as a text box. And I will rename this text box as let's say txt underscore document set name. So here we will take the input. We'll take the input from the user. I'm just removing the default text. So basically we will take the input from the user that what they want to create the document set or the name of the document set. So for that purpose, I can also add a label so that it's very clear to understand what we are taking as an input. Enter document set name. So basically here I am taking an input from the user so that the document set name which is given by the user can be created dynamically in the SharePoint document library. So this is my input text and parallelly I'm also adding just one button. And on the click of this button, we will be creating 
the document set so i will say is create document set that's it so what we have done is that we have added a text box control a label and a just button and on the click of this button on the on select property of this button i want to call a power automate flow all right so let's see this so what i'm going to do is i am going to the power automate i will click on add flow i will click on create new flow and it will give you the option to create the power automate flow right away in the power apps or from the power app screen so we are going to create the flow the flow which we are going to create will have these steps so we will create some variables initialize some variables first of all and primarily we will be calling the action send an http request to action which will which will help us to create the document set in our sharepoint document library so i'll start start from create from blank i have clicked on create from blank which will allow me to create an instant flow within the power apps window itself so the screen is loading all right so as the trigger you can see the power apps trigger has already been added because we are creating this flow from within the power app screen which is fine so first of all the first and foremost i will be initializing few of the variables so i will write var and in the variables definitely you can find initialize variable okay so as, as i told you earlier that we have to create some variables first of all so the first variable which i am creating is var document set name so we can call it document set name and the type i will give as a string and the value i will be getting it from power app so i will take the value as ask in power apps so this is the first variable which i have created which is where document set name i can rename definitely rename this variable you should always rename it uh, the variable so i am saying document set name okay this is the first variable which we have created we'll create few more variables so that it's easy for us to understand so i'm initializing one more variable the type will be of a string let's say i take here is sharepoint where sharepoint library name all right so where sharepoint library name i can rename this so i can say sharepoint library name okay so this is where sharepoint library name value we already know so we can take directly add the value which is our library name pp document set all right now few more variables very quickly so where i am just initializing a variable and this time i will say where site url site url is also very important to take this will be of type string and site url definitely you can take what is a site url currently in my case it's poc site so i will enter poc site and i will rename this variable i will say site url okay so these are the three variables which i have created document set name which i will be taking from the power apps sharepoint library name site url here one more variable i want to create which is again very important which is your content type id so i am taking this a new variable where content type id so i can take here i can rename this content type id and i will take it as a string variable now this is very important to understand how you can take the content type id so if you go to library settings and you click on the document set content type i clicked on the document set content type you can just copy the url just copy the url in a notepad file and in the notepad file if you copy the url you will find that there will be a parameter which is called c type so c type is your content type id which you can definitely copy and you just copy it in your variable value all right so that is how your four variables are created now let's rename this flow so create document set demo this is the name of the flow which i have given the last step which we have to add is and that is the most important step is send an http request to sharepoint so send http request to sharepoint here you will find that there is a action which is not the premium action please remember this is a standard action which you can use so send an http request to sharepoint 
Here it will ask for some of the mandatory parameter. Site address, definitely we know that on which site we want to create our document set, which is POC site in my case. Method, the method should be post because we want to post, we want to create the data, create the document set dynamically. That's why I have used the method as post. Now, another important thing, the URI. So this is kind of a REST endpoint, which we have to pass for this action, send an HTTP request to SharePoint. And the URI in this case is underscore VTI underscore bin slash list data dot SVC slash. Now slash is the library name, the library name, which I've already created, which is SP library name. So that variable you can definitely pass here. I will pass it as where SP library name. So you can see here that site address method URI and some headers because this is a post method. So definitely you have to pass the headers also. So in the case of header, I can write here slug because I want to pass the slug and you have to enter the value for this particular header. Now value, how you have to create the value. This is very important to understand that how the header needs to be passed. So first of all, you have to pass the site URL and in the site URL then slash, then you have to pass the library name. So you can write like this library name. You have to pass the library name after the slash. So I'm writing library name. And once the library name has been passed, again, you just put slash. Then you have to pass the document set name. Now here document set name, because document set name, we are taking it from the Power App. So definitely you have to pass that as well, document set name. And at the end, when you want to pass the uh, content type ID of the content type, you have to use the pipe sign and then just pass where content type ID. That's it. So this is the slug header, which you have to pass. And how we have created is site URL slash library name slash document set a pipe sign and then content type ID. If you don't want to create the variables, definitely you can pass it as the hard coded value well also. But I always like to create the variables or initialize the variables in Power Automate. That's why I have passed it as the variables. Now our flow is ready. I can click on save. The flow will be saved and we will be redirected back or navigated back to the Power Apps screen. That's it. So you can see here the Power Automate flow is getting added here in the Power Apps or the Power App Studio. Now what will happen once the Power Automate is added? So you see here create document set demo has been added. This is the flow. Now directly what you can do is on the click of the button, we have to just call that flow. So for that, what you can do is create document set demo dot run. And as a parameter, it is asking for a very uh, value which we have to pass from Power Apps to the Power Automate. So we can pass the text box dot text, whatever user will enter by that name, we want to create the document set. That is the target of this demo. So here I will say what is the name of my text box is txt, txt underscore doc set name dot text. So whatever value will be passed from this text box or from this button to the Power Automate, this will be taken as an input parameter and the name which is given by the user in the text box by that name, the document set will be created at the back end in the SharePoint library. Let's save our work before I will show you the uh, final demo or the final output. So let's say I want to create a document set with the name demo by Whipple. So this is the document set name by which I want to create the document set dynamically on the click of this button. I will click on this button and you will see within few milliseconds or seconds, our document set with this name will be created in the library. The name should be demo by Whipple. Let's navigate to the document library. Let me refresh the document library and you will see a document set has been created with the same name demo by Whipple. If I click on this now, the documents can be uploaded and some metadata, metadata, for example, document type or any other metadata can be tagged to the documents inside this document set. So that's all uh, for this video. I think you like this video and you got the idea that why I created this video because this is a very, very common uh, requirement, I will say, to upload the documents uh, considering SharePoint as a data source. So in my upcoming videos, I will be also showcasing that how you can upload the documents within this document set dynamically. Keep watching. Thank you.
for watching this video.